Hey, Savat here. I'm going to bring you a video today on Grand Blue Fantasy for people who are just starting off and you're trying to farm your Omegas, but you have no strength whatsoever. Um, or you just want to know where should I actually get my start at in the game. One of the things that I highly recommend, it, regardless of what you pull, regardless of what you get, it doesn't matter. One of the things that you should actually do in this game is focus on having some type of leeching party if that's what you want to call it i've heard that term thrown around a couple of times but yes it's honestly what you want to do you want to be effective and help out everybody else who's actually pulling their weight and the best way to actually do that is with a particular class now you're going to go down a class line and i do recommend starting off with not this class <laughs> um switch class that's what i meant to hit the thief rope so you want to start off as a thief, and you want this for this treasure hunting skill. This skill, this bounty hunter, not treasure hunter, I do apologize. This skill here is going to increase the drop rate. Now there is a lot of people who are going to be taking advantage of this and using it, but it's still very good to have. If you can drop into an Omega battle of any sort, and you're dropping these particular skills down there on it, you're going to help out everyone in there by boosting their treasure find rate, which is going to be just utterly amazing and when you're not able to throw around your own weight yet you're not able to actually help with the battle this is the greatest class to actually start with to be able to be beneficial now the second side to that or row two honestly you're going to want to move up to is you want to go to the raider so the raider is going to get treasure hunter two now there's other skills here as well it doesn't matter so these raider skills amazing you still get your treasure finder and in three is the hawkeye so the hawkeye is going to get you bounty hunter three so that's going to be a three time bonus now whenever you do set up your class and we're going to go ahead and do that here so let's go ahead and change over to this class so you switch over to your class one thing you are going to need to have is definitely one of the weapons you should be able to pick those up quite easily it honestly doesn't matter doesn't matter if you have a common weapon, uncommon weapon, whatnot. You aren't going in there to be the biggest damage dealer or do anything. So basically, you're going to take whatever weapon you want. If you got some daggers, if you got some guns, doesn't matter. Even if they're super rares or even a rare, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. So you can pick whatever weapon you want. Now, once you actually have your weapon selected, all right, you're actually going to want to go to class again. After you go to class again, you are going to come down here to this sub skill. And you're going to select your sub skill. And on your sub skills, there is a ton of things you can use here. Um, but again, when you're fighting other people's Omegas, the likelihood of them surviving with all of the One Punch Men, all of the people who are just going to be joining the battle and destroying everything is slim to none. So, for example, um, having a Dispel is actually going to be extremely helpful, and I had tried using that for a while. I wanted to do uh, Luminara Omega battles. So I threw a Dispel in there thinking that, okay, I can throw up the Dispel. Honestly, not needed. And a lot of people are going to tell you, you're going to want to have more than just your Treasure Finder. No, you really don't with how fast these things die you don't need anything more so if you have the treasure hunter one or two or three you're going to pick the second best one and put it in your slot that's all you really want to do the more of these that you can get off the better so nothing else really matters now yes if you are having a group of friends and they have something like they're missing they need to not take damage if you're going with your guild and doing this but this is just literally for hitting that raid button and joining a battle that's going to be over in two seconds probably many times when you click that battle you're the battle finished before you even have a chance to do anything this is what you want to have if you can add yourself a little bit more loot the more the merrier you can farm up your omegas you can get those super rare weapons from the drops that you're going to need to upgrade your stuff that's it that's everything so now you got your party set up your characters again it doesn't matter so what you really want to do whenever you're setting up this class and this is the one thing that is very important you don't want to use all of your super rares look I'm gonna show you something so 
On here, you get Renown Pendants. Every 5,000 Renown Pendants that you get, you can trade that in for an Omega Weapon of your choice. Now, you have these daily and these weeklies. It's a good thing to set up two parties, or you can use one, but you get bonuses for rare and bonuses for super rares that are active whenever the boss is defeated. Now, that's a big important part there. They have to be active when the boss is defeated. So, setting up a party of all rares, mixture of rares and super rares if you want to try to get this knocked out as soon as possible. You can make one party that's all rares, one party that's all super rares. And once you finish your thousand points for the week for rares, go to the super rare party. Join with the super rare party. So you don't want super rares or super super rares. You don't want them. You don't need them for this particular party. So, because you haven't drew any super rares, or you only have some for your main party, doesn't matter. Not for this one. So for your characters, you see all this rarity high? Go to your rarity lows. You want to go to your rares and make a party. I'm making a fire team here, so again, this doesn't even matter. You don't have to keep everything uniform. You don't want to keep everything uniform in some cases. It's whatever you really have, but we're just going to go ahead and throw a complete fire team together. Guys. So we're going to put her in there, and we're going to go all the way to the end, we're going to throw her in there. Gracious now in that. here too, if you have people that give you more bonuses to treasure find, if have party, not just your party, but have complete party upgrades, buffs, things like that, if they have abilities that are going to affect everyone. Use that. Anything that you have that's going to help out everybody else is going to be the best. Now, I'm just throwing this all together really quick-like, so I don't plan on looking for any of those particular characters. Not at this moment. I'm just throwing this together in this particular Bantando. video. Now, you've got your two backup characters here. Again, you can make those super, super rares if you want. But why? If something dies, the characters have to be active. So you still want to have your super rares and your rares in here, and that's it. That's it. So for this particular setup, it's awesome for that reason. I mean, you don't have to be the person who has the best draws. You don't have to have your party put together yet. You are literally just throwing together what you have. And they don't even all have to match, like I said. So, you got your party together, your summons. Summons are a bit more important. Okay. How am I going to go over this? Because I don't have these summons. I'm still actually farming up one. Um, so, just to show you guys, I'm hoping, hoping that we're going to find something. Let's go to quests. Let's go to raid. Now when you come to raid, you're looking for omegas. Preferably your own omega, but you do need all of the omegas. So finding any omega is okay, because it's going to help you out in the long run. This right here, this white rabbit, you can farm up this white rabbit by doing a particular stage. The stage is kind of hard. Most likely you're not going to be able to get it as a new player, and it does take a lot of time. Now also, this one right here, perfect, especially especially if you find her as a summon. The likelihood of you having her as a new player, again, not going to happen. But this auto revive is great. Remember, your characters have to be alive. This is going to let you be able to do more attacks, and it's going to cause an auto revive to happen on all your people. So if you do have friends who have that, take it. This 20% boost to drop rates, fantastic. So those are the two summons that you're looking for, the White Rabbit and her. Now... Let's see here, what am I looking for? Crew. Me personally, I started my own crew. I had a couple of friends join. It's a pretty dead crew at this time now. But if you can join a crew, awesome. If you can't create your own crew, and whenever you do create your crew, you can get airship parts. And you're not gonna be able to do this as a new player, but eventually, even if you don't have anybody else, you're going to be able to pick up some airship parts. Um, I'm trying to look to see here. Okay, so this one here brings good luck treasure hunters. 20% boost to drop rates in battle. Try to get this active. Um, 
this is, I believe, where mine is currently at level 3. It's going to start lower than that. And you can upgrade it. I think this is the upgrade. Mine's at 15%. I believe it's going to go to 20 if I buy this particular one. But grab that. That's going to give you more fine. And there are other ways to get fine. There are items that do it. Weapons. But again, if you're just going in, you don't have to worry about that. And we're just trying to show you everything real quick that can maximize. Journey drops if you have the ability to. If you're going to be sitting down for an hour, activate your drop rate. For this particular time, I did not get anything. So I'm just drop rate 1, 4%. Why not? If you're playing, if you're going to sit down and play for your hour for the day, and you're like, I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to do nothing but farm omegas. Activate that. Every little boost helps. Anyway, let's go back to the party. So we talked about the summons. If you do happen to have any of those summons, fantastic. If not, just auto-select. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. So you're going to put in here whatever. Your weapons, again, doesn't matter. Well, wants to give me this dagger first. Again, doesn't matter. Who cares? All of this stuff, nothing. And so now you have your party set up. This particular one is fire, all based off of rare characters. We have our, our abilities selected, we have our summons selected. Now on here too, there are summons that do, by having them, they affect the entire um, party stuff. You can get a lot of, or not party, but the entire raid that's in there affects everyone. You can get these summons, they release them on events in a lot of cases. And I don't know if I picked up any. I think I might have. I think she does. But I didn't get all of her stuff. Uh, to all allies, defense. Is she one of the ones? She might be. This 10% boost, if this is one of the ones that activates to everybody, that's something good to have. You're going to actually be helping out all of the people in there. If you don't have any of the XP up items or the drop rate items or any of that type of stuff that you're looking for. So... These buffs may seem minor, but they are going to help out in a way. You're trying to be helpful. So, if your party is consistent of having any rares or super rares... Okay, we're having to go back quite a bit. Any super rares or rares that have abilities that affect everyone. If you have people that have shields that affect everyone for an ultimate attack. Things like that. Are they going to come into play a lot? No. Honestly, no, they're not. So put together whatever you can. Anything that you can do to support other players, fantastic. But is it going to be that helpful? In most cases, nope. Now that you have your party set up, you're going to go to your quests, and you're going to take a look at a couple of things here. You're going to figure out who you want to fight, and you're going to prioritize who you want to fight over everybody else. Ultimately, in the beginning, you're going to want to fight Omegas first. So... You pick your Omega, you're almost always going to want to just select the miscellaneous tab here, and you're going to look through and you're going to see, do I have any of the super upgraded uh, Kaguyas? No, you don't. So then you default to a Kaguya. If you have friends that have them, use them first. Your friends will appreciate it. If not, go and choose any ones. After that, look for the White Rabbit. The White Rabbit is uh, the second thing that you want. The White Rabbit, whenever you use the summon, is going to be activating these buffs. Look up here, you can see there's already five being used. So we're going to go ahead and throw ours twice. We're going to activate this. And this, Luminar Omega, is the boss I'm telling you that the Dispel is very good on. Well, half the time I've had that Dispel equipped, and it still hasn't come into play. <clears throat> so we just joined this fight. We cast our summon. If you're playing on mobile or you can turn everything off, we've already increased this a little bit. Look, dead. I didn't even have a chance to do anything else. So our party is chilling here. We didn't even have a chance to attack. This is what's going to happen most of the time, which is why I see all of those extra things they don't come into play. Now, what has happened with this? I'm going to get a bonus 24 for having all these rare characters in my party. This bonus is what you want to have. I would have got two pendants for this. I'm getting 26 total for this, which is going towards that bonus. And so, it's definitely what you want. You get your loot. You come back out here. We're going to go ahead and click on Raid again. 
Now, we don't have any Omegas here. At this particular time, you can choose to try to do one of these if you wanted to. Right now, we're on a half um, EP event. So, you might want to. You only have 8 EP. If you have a lot stored up of your... I forget what they're called, but you have a, a items that actually increase the amount of EP that you have. If you're just trying to do a run where you're going through these and, and, and going through as many as possible, you can use those there. Twin Elements is a good one to join for me. I do need to get some of that Twin Element stuff, but that battle is going to be much longer, and joining one of these higher battles as a leeching class... I don't really recommend that too terribly much. I'm going to do it for this particular battle here, if it'll let me, if they haven't maxed out already. But this is just for showing. I normally, I wouldn't want this. You want to try to support Because a lot of times, people aren't going to be able to do what they actually need to do in this battle. As you can see, this battle, it's not dropping down so quick. And it's not going to drop down so quick. They do need actual help on these very high level non Omega bosses. And by you taking up a slot in here as a leecher, you're not doing anybody any good. And if you don't need this, if you don't need anything that drops from here as of yet, you could honestly be making this battle fail by just being lot of somebody who could have actually been causing damage and what are you doing especially if there's already another leecher in here nothing if this is already built up to nine which is the maximum you're not doing anything now this party is not going to bring anything to the table so we're not going to do any new we're not going to be helping out in any way shape or form and the marginal increase that, that plus 9 is going to give them is not going to help out. Uh, not if they don't win. Not if they don't beat it. So as you see, these guys, they weren't even leveled. None of them leveled. Doesn't matter. So see this? This person... They put a lot of time and effort into this. 250,000 points. We're at 2,000. We're right here. We want to try. Those abilities refresh every three turns. We're in break right now. We don't have to worry about an ultimate attack. So we're going to go ahead and continue to attack here. And the reason why we're doing this is because there's a couple of points you have to be wary of. Whenever it hits the halfway marker, an ultimate attack is going to be done regardless. So if you're attacking and they hit that mark, expect an ultimate attack in revenge to that. So if you're fighting with all of your rares who aren't very strong and you throw an attack at that particular time, expect to lose everyone. I mean, just expect that. Once you get to your third turn, it's going to allow you to throw these and try again. Our whole goal, we got a lot of misses. Miss, miss, nothing. Alright, so we're getting very close to this halfway point. She is going to hit very hard again because she's out of break. Now, your guys may not have the hit points that my guys do here. That's based off of the equipment that I... She is halfway, so we're going to expect a, uh, a major attack because I don't really care. I'm going to go ahead and show you. She should do an ultimate after this. She didn't. We just dodge. <laughs> but that's the time where normally they do hit the ultimates. Um, whether or not they do have their bars. So the game loves to prove me wrong. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and attack again and try to get another one off. Hopefully my main character will survive. Um, it might not. <laughs> Those are things you have to uh, take into consideration whenever you are leeching. But you see how much longer this battle is. We should not be leeching. We're ranked number five. They don't have a lot of people joining. This has not been official. We did manage to survive. Except for her. So now she's going to get revived because of the summon that we brought in. And now my skills are blocked for three more turns. And she's going to explode in one turn. So attacking really isn't uh, doing us very very much use right now. We're really stuck. 
So she's dead for real this time, because that was her second death. And he is going to get auto-revived. So we're going to go ahead and just use abilities if we can. It would have been really nice to be able to use that again and try to build this up. But as you can see, normally if there was a lot of creatures in here, this would be that didn't happen. But see the auto revives? The auto revives are, are really what's going to save you if you can pick up that summon. Keep your party, allow you to do stuff. Uh, it was active a second ago. So, don't join your 100 plus battles, join your Omegas. That's basically the moral of the story here. These battles people actually need. Rare characters also have a lot of very interesting abilities. So a lot of them are, are pretty fun to use. So building a rare party isn't necessarily a bad thing. If you do happen to be in these battles and you last a long enough time, you start to kill everybody. Losses is down. His defense down is gonna make everybody hit harder in this case. It missed, fortunately. Alright, we're we're in a rough spot. We can go ahead and attack because she's broken. I can't stress enough. This is not what you want to do. Do you see how long this battle's going? This isn't what you're looking for. You're trying to get your items, get your points, get everything. You want to try to fight this Omega. Fight the Omegas over and over and over again. Get as much item drop as you can on the Omegas. And do whatever you can to make it happen and make your party um, everyone in the raid life better, better position. Give them those treasure ups. Give them any type of buffs that you can. The battle's probably going to be over quick. They don't need you. You're not there to be needed. You're there to make everything better. Now we just lost two people here that one's going to auto revive and the other isn't. So now we're not going to get our full reward. And also I lost the person who's going to be doing my attacks too. So in this particular case, I would say if it was versus an Omega or something that's Nobody easier, go ahead and stop attacking and make sure your party stays alive. In this case here, I'm going to try to die because the bonus that I get from dying is going to help out everybody else. So me getting wiped out is actually more beneficial to them than not. And I partook in this battle. If I brought in a real party, I might have been able to do some, some real meaningful damage. So, inhibit overdrive? Yes, we want to do that. So we're going to help everybody out there by doing that, and hopefully they'll be able to finish that particular quest. Now, if you do leave a raid battle of like that in any way, you can always come back to it, or down here you'll have your pending battles under the raid section, which you can come back and pick up your loot at, at a later time. But ultimately, once you got your party set up, you want to come here, and Colossus Omega I want, Will I make it in this one in time? Doubtful. So you find the closest thing. Already have our party chose. We come in. He's already gone. So that's okay. That's going to happen quite a bit, especially if you pick somebody who's so low like that. Am I saying stay away from them? No, if they're, if they're your summon that you're trying to get, if you're trying to build a fire team and you need Colossus Omega, try to get in that battle. If you're able to get one thing off, that could be the difference of you getting another cane or not. So, give it a shot. What time does it waste? Nothing really. You're coming in here and you're moving fast. You're trying to get stuff done. So here again, you want to make sure you can get your treasure find off. And... 
and since this, in this case we don't have the resurrect, we just have that. We're going to throw out every single little thing that we can to help. It doesn't matter what they have, we're going to use Maximize our points. And then if you do have a chance after that, go ahead and request that backup. Try to get other people in. And at first, that extra click from requesting backup can be the difference between you and not four dies. So, we got all this stuff set up. Now, the one thing you're looking at is this is an overdrive. Someone's probably going to die if they attack. If it does hit this marker here, we're probably going to see an overdrive. So, right now, we're kind of safe to attack. Uh, yeah, getting some basic hits in. We're going to save to attack still. Now we're not safe to attack. So watch. Hopefully, if they trying, if they're not trying to prove me wrong yet again, what we should see here is an ultimate attack go off. With Celeste Omega, I believe hers is going to be a massive debuff in the so it's going to cause a ton of damage, which you may not survive if you're a low level, so you got to be careful for that. Now any type of healing is going to be damage to us for a certain. However, this does give us the option to try to use our treasure again. And again, she's dying pretty quickly, but a lot of times they die almost instantly. Um, also, we do have a summon that is available. We want to try to use one that's not going to affect just our party. Now at this point I want to keep my characters alive, she's at 18% health, there is no reason for me to hit this attack button and lose anybody. So at this point it becomes kind of either a waiting game or you can just go back to your page and move on to the next battle. I have found that sometimes if I do move on to the next battle and leave the combat, I do not get the reward, and I don't mean the loot, but I do mean the, uh, the honors portion. Um, so she's chilling at dead. <laughs> I was about to say 3%, but yeah, they died pretty quickly. And what we did was we helped. So now we've got four treasure chests. That's going to give us a pretty good chance to get that Omega weapon, which won't happen. I mean, like one in 30 times you might get it, but we got our full bonus, 24. So we got 28 total here. We were able to actually help the battle by putting the treasure chests, or the loot up. And we didn't make out anything great, but these XP boosts are going to be awesome for leveling up your stuff. And these items too, they're going to be useful. Don't discount those. You may not need them right now, but you will need these. And so, fighting all of the Omegas, all of the Omegas, is something that you're going to want to do. And one of the reasons for that is eventually you are going to want to fight uh, Bahamut. Well, one, you're going to want to have a party for every occasion. And two, you are going to want to fight Bahamut. And in order to fight Bahamut, you are going to need to create items. Yeah. So even for the regular Bahama, I don't know what's going on. Whatever I pressed there was not the right button. Unless they've changed something since I've actually fought a Bahama. Um. Requirement to start 80 or higher, playable three times. Okay, here we go. You need to have this. In order to make that, you need those orbs, which are crazy hard to get by farming. So, I know this video ran a little bit long, but I hope it was helpful in creating your farming video, or your farming class, I apologize. Once you have your farming class set up, you want to make one of rare and super rare. You can go through, you can do those farms. It's a great way to do that solo, especially if you don't have a guild or anything like that and be helpful to others. Hey, if you did like this video, if you found it helpful in any way, shape, or form, 
please share, like, and subscribe. And if you do have any questions or want to know anything else, please leave it in the comments and I'll be happy to help you out the best that I can. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you'll have a great day. Bye.